Thank you. So we're going to talk about margins this time and kind of the update as there's been some change in this landscape over the last couple of years. So we'll start by looking at a couple of cases. Um, the first case would be a 59-year-old female. She had a screening um, abnormality on screening mammogram. Uh, the ma a mass was seen very small on ultrasound, one centimeter in size. It was biopsied an IDC, uh, estrogen sensitive, her tumor negative. But on her, she underwent lumpectomy. You can see she has not a lot of breast tissue. She does have implants in place. Um, and you can see on final pathology, her tumor was 0.1 millimeters from the specimen's anterior margin. Um, so in the past, we've had a lot of discrepancy with what we should do with uh, margin status. When you look back at the original breast cancer trials that established breast conservation therapy as a standard, a standard of care, equivalent in terms of outcomes and overall survival, um, the majority of those trials actually just looked for gross negative, grossly negative margins. They actually did not examine the margins, and that includes like the Danish trial, the Milan trial, uh, the NCI, NCI trial. Um, the only trial of, of those five trials to not do that was the uh, NSABP B6, who actually did require um, microscopically free margins at the specimen edge. And we've since shown, you know, that positive margins are associated with an increased risk of local recurrence in these patients. But there's really been an inconsistency in, um, among surgeons, among institutions, and in how they handle margins. Some people said, you know, margins should be five millimeters, maybe they should be two millimeters in invasive cancer. Um, and there really was a lot of inconsistency. And that's amazing. I mean, that was back in just a few years ago, and that's, you know, 20 years after uh, breast conservation therapy was established as, as a legitimate uh, um, alternative to mastectomy. So in 2012, when they look at, when a study looked at about um, breast conservation patients, about a quarter of them were undergoing re-excision. And if you look at those, about half of those were actually undergoing re-excision for margins that were actually negative, but they were considered close. Um, so obviously re-excision is associated with a lot of issues. Obviously it increases patient anxiety, increases cost of, of medical care, um, may lead to poor cosmetic outcome. And a, it has been shown to be associated with patients' decision to convert to mastectomy or even undergo a contralateral prophylactic mastectomy. So recently, the um, SSO and ASTRO uh, came together, that was in 2014, for a consistent statement on what we should do for margins for invasive breast cancer. And that was based on both expert opinion as well as a meta-analysis um, that was published at the same time. And the meta-analysis looked at 33 studies between 1965 and 2013 to include over 28,000 patients, um, of only whom 1,500 had a recurrence. Um, and so with that, they were able to come up with some good guidelines that can help um, us as we move forward in how we talk to our patients after um, they undergo breast conservation therapy. And so if you look at the summary of the practice guidelines, kind of the highlights would really be that um, a positive margin is known to increase the risk of a local recurrence. There's a two-fold two risk of a ipsilateral breast tumor recurrence when there is a positive margin. And this cannot be nullified by use of systemic therapy, radiation therapy, um, or even favorable biology. That, that risk persists. However, with negative margins, um, that does obviously minimize the risk of a breast tumor recurrence. However, wider margins than just no tumor on ink really does not significantly lower that risk. Um, obviously, you can think of different caveats, right? So if patients get systemic therapy. If, if a patient were to not get systemic therapy, should that alter our margin width? And there's no evidence to suggest that. Um, we know that there obviously are different biologic subtypes of breast cancer. Um, there's still no indication to have wider margins based on a more aggressive biologic subtype. Um, if a patient were to go undergo different types of radiation therapy, there's obviously fractionation, boost, whole breast radiation, um, that really, again, should not uh, make a difference as far as the margin width. Um, young age, obviously we know that patients that are younger have an increased risk of um, uh, a breast recurrence, um, but that risk is there whether the patient undergoes breast conservation therapy or mastectomy because we see that, that risk persists. So there's really no evidence that we should um, increase the margin width for our younger patients as well. Um, when you look at lobular carcinoma, again, uh, same thing. You do not need to increase the margin width. Obviously, the significance of pleomorphic LCIS, which acts more like DCIS, is a little bit less um, certain. So if we look at a second case, um, a 56-year-old female with a newly palpable breast mass, uh, workup showed multiple enlarged lymph nodes. She actually had lobular carcinoma, um, moderately estrogen sensitive, um, her tumor negative, her FNA also confirmed involvement of, of multiple lymph nodes. So you can see based on her MRI, she had a large extent of disease um, with a lot of non-mass enhancement as well as a, a mass there. 
So the patient underwent a metastatic workup, which was negative. She enrolled on a neoadjuvant clinical trial um, and actually had a really good response. You can see that this is her MRI, and she had actually had no residual tumor within the breast and actually um, had no evidence of residual disease within her lymph node as well. So her options were discussed, and she dis you know, discussed mastectomy versus lumpectomy, and she ultimately decided to undergo a lumpectomy with um, axillary lymph node dissection. So at her final pathology, again, she had multiple small foci um, of uh, tumor within the breast. She actually had a complete response within the lymph nodes, um, and there was treatment effect there. Um, but within the lumpectomy specimen, she had uh, the largest focus of tumor was eight millimeters in size. However, she did have focal tumor, tumor involvement um, in both the lateral and superior margins. So the question is, should we re-excise this patient? And so there are reasons to consider re-excision in a patient where um, technically the margins, you know, there's no ink on tumor, you know, things are very close. Um, and this was, I think, a good guideline uh, published by Kelly Hunt in, back in 2014. And it really says that, you know, if you have patients that have focal tumor at the inked margin, maybe there's a significant discrepancy between um, radiologic evaluation and pathologic tumor size. Um, you know, if they're scattered fo foci of DCIS near multiple margins. Um, and, you know, for this patient, you know, she had a lobular histology and had a large um, burden of disease. And we know that lobular histology does not tend to respond as well um, to, to you know, adjuvant chemotherapy, even though this lady really actually had a really good response. Um, and so I think that just highlights that clinical judgment really remains key. Um, Obviously, we have guidelines and they are helpful, but we still need to tailor our therapy to each specific and individual patient. Um, and so um, I would argue that this patient should undergo re-excision. So looking at our third and final case study, we have a 65-year-old female who had calcifications on a screening mammogram, biopsy showed DCIS, and she elected to undergo a lumpectomy. In her final medial margin, her DCIS was less than one millimeter from her final margin. So the question is, should this lady undergo re-excision? Um, and so kind of a similar controversy has existed with the DCIS and margin status. Um, we know that overall these patients do really well, right? This is DCIS and their survival rates are well over 95% in patients who undergo breast conservation therapy and whole breast radiation therapy. Um, um, no tumor on ink was, so looking in the study, looking at whole, re whole breast radiation therapy for DCIS, uh, three out of four of those studies actually required no tumor on ink was really the only requirement uh, for, for that study. There was no margin width specified. However, some single institution studies have suggested that um, margins greater than, you know, a centimeter at least should be, um, should be advocated, um, and in that setting, potentially you could avoid whole breast radiation therapy. So again, there was just a discrepancy, lack of consensus, uh, a lot of re-excisions, um, but about to one-third of women attempting for breast conservation therapy for DCIS were actually undergoing re-excisions. And again, the same um, potential for increased cost, worse cosmetic outcome, and conversion to mastectomy as well. So again, recently, um, that was uh, just in 2016, um, there was a consensus panel that again, um, based on expert opinion as well as a meta-analysis, um, asked this question, asked what should be the margin width for DCIS? Um, and this panel included, you know, people from SSO, ASCO, as well as ASTRO. Uh, this meta-analysis was actually, it was a lot smaller than the one for invasive cancer. It included 20, set, 20 studies with about 7,800 patients. But um, it was important to know the actual margin status, and so that's why that that's patient size is less. Um, all of the patients underwent whole breast radiation therapy, and only 20% of those patients underwent endocrine therapy. And so obviously the, most of these are retrospective studies, and so it, it is still, I mean, the caveat it is providing observational level data. But thankfully, we do have some good guidelines and kind of the best guidelines that we've had thus far. So again, kind of the same is true with invasive cancer. We know that on, with DCIS, um, there is about a two-fold increase of risk of ipsilateral breast tumor recurrence when there is a positive margin. And we know that half the time when those recurrences occur, right, half, of those half the time those are invasive cancers and half of the time those are uh, recurrences of DCIS. Um, so again, you know, a negative margin is important. But what should be the negative margin width? And when they looked at um, zero to one millimeter versus two millimeters, there was a difference um, in risk of recurrence. But when you start to um, increase that margin width, to maybe three, five, 10 millimeters, there really was not a statistically significant difference. And so really the margin width of, of two millimeters was adopted so that all margins for lumpectomy should be greater than or equal to two millimeters. 
Um, that still holds true even if the patient gets excision alone. It's not followed by whole breast radiation therapy. Um, that should be regardless of whether the patient begins endocrine therapy afterwards. And that should also be regardless of patient and tumor factors. Um, that includes young age, um, more aggressive histology, maybe ER negative DCIS. Um, and then really that should not influence um, the decision for um, radiation therapy and how that radiation is delivered.